Welcome to the 9040 EPL ARIES Demo Kit Terminal Window session using the terminal window for control and debug. At the end of the session you should be able to enable and disable drives, check system configuration, change between prompt levels, view and monitor programs, and check your EPL status and errors. In this session we're looking at the terminal emulator. I'm already connected to my 9040. I've clicked on Terminal Emulator and it's brought me up to this very uh, user-friendly blue screen at a sys prompt. At the sys prompt we can do things that affect the overall system. Uh, we can do defines, uh, we can manually do uh, dimensioning, we can check and see what defines and dimensions are already done. A simple def command will print out all of the defines that have been done and many of these are um, done in the program as well as uh, in the configuration of the drive. I can also look and see how memory is dimensioned. If I do a dim. At the sysprompt we can also look at diagnostic information. If I want to look at diagnostics for the 9040 if I just type in diag and hit enter. This brings up all kinds of information about the processor. It uh, shows me uh, configuration information. It shows me uh, error status and status of the, say, like the CAN network. Uh, it shows me connection information. We can see here under data for client management connection zero that um, the client IP address of 192.168.10.100, which is the PC I'm connected from. You can see how long I was connected. We can also take a look at the health of our EPL network. To clear the screen, we're getting quite a bit of information here. You can do a right click and do clear all, which brings us back to our sysprompt. From here, I'm going to do a diag EPLD. This returns information about our EPL controller, tells us that the network's operational or not, how many control nodes are attached, the state of our network, how long the network's been up and running, if there's any failures, and this will keep a running count. So if there's a cable problem, uh, a noise problem, and it's having trouble communicating, it's going to keep a count of how many times it's had a problem. So uh, anytime you need to find out about the EPL, you can come up to the sys level and find that. Now the system level, um, as we know from the earlier um, sessions, when we define our nodes or we define our uh, drives, they're set up to be um, attached to masters and each master is attached to a specific PLC program. In the case of our network we have two drives which are attached to master zero. Master zero is associated with program zero. If I was to do a drive off X from the sysprompt I get an unknown command. The reason that's an unknown command is that it does not know anything about X. X is an alias for axis zero. At the sys prompt, I could turn off axis zero, but I would have to specify it as axis zero. Okay, that turned my drive off. The X and the Y are aliases for axis 0 and 1. I'm going to turn my drive back on. My drive just re-enabled. In order to be able to access the drives via their aliases, X and Y, I need to be at the program 0 prompt. To get to the program 0 prompt, I'm going to type prog0, P-R-O-G-0. 
Notice my prompt has changed to P00. I'm in the right place now. Remember we have eight motion profiles and eight non-motion profiles. So that gives us P00 through P15. We also have the PLCs, which are accessed the same way, PLC0 through the PLC8. So what we can do is from P00, we can do a drive off X, and now it's a valid command. I'm actually in the portion of the processor that knows about the alias X and Y. And turn my drive back on. The terminal window allows me to do things like um, test my motion. I can command motion from here just like I can from a program. So if I want to move X uh, for a relative move of 10 uh, units, my motor just took off and ran 10 units, I can do that. I can set uh, my velocity, my um, acceleration, deceleration, so forth from the command line. From this command line, I can also do things like look at my program. If I do a list, it's going to show me the program that's stored in prog0. To list a program, I need to be at the prompt for that program. I can also do things like run the program. If I just run the program, I'll get no feedback. I can do an L run, which is a listen and run. And if there's any messages embedded in my program that have a print statement, I'll get those messages printed to the terminal screen. I can also have it do a step mode. So if I do a uh, step, that puts it into step mode. If I do an L run, uh, it will step through the program. I'm going to turn step off. I can do a, a trace on. Trace on is T-R-O-N, Tron. And with trace on, when I do an L run, as it runs through the program, it prints out the line number that it's executing. This is very useful when you're having problems getting your motion to, to work, or if you're having it hang up somewhere. Uh, if you do a trace on and an L run, it's going to stop at whichever line number it's having a problem. So you can use it as a debug and tracing tool. To turn off trace, we do a trace off, T-R-O-F-F. -F. While you're in this screen, you'll find certain commands that you're issuing over and over again. You're turning on the drives, you're turning off the drives, uh, turning on trace, turning off trace. Whatever you're using the most, uh, we have eight user buttons. If you right click on one of the user buttons, you can go to button setup. So for button one, let's make button one uh, drive off X and Y. The ACR code is going to be drive off X, Y. And I think I'll add another one to turn the drive on. Say drive on X, Y. So with these buttons configured, they're going to issue the command just like I had typed it at the command line. So if I do a drive off XY, my two drives just shut off. I can do drive on, just turn my two drives back on. So this is very useful for you're doing moves that you're not exactly sure what the result's going to be or you're having some problems with it running away. 
Uh, you can give yourself a button here to turn the drives off. You can give yourself a kill motion, things like that. Or if you want to have a button that always runs a specific program, you can set up a button that will do that. Anything that you can type on this side, uh, as long as you can fit it under the, the length in the button, it'll work. Another thing that you can do with the EPL network, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, drive talk in the past, we have uh, talk two, which is the EPL drive version of drive talk. And we have a button in the terminal window where you can do an enable talk to. Then you just get a cursor that moves to the left and you can issue EPL commands from this point. To put it back into standard terminal emulator mode, you can just hit the disable talk to. So instead of having to have a program now or type in the open the port and assign it to a specific um, device, you can just do that from the push button. The terminal emulator can also let you edit programs. Let's say if I list my program out, and I'm going to change to program 8. Program 8 is a non-motion program, Prog 8. Prog 8 is where the configuration to turn on my EPL drives at boot up are. So let's do a list of that one. Okay, there's a list of our program. So we can see that as the program starts up, it's a P-boot program, which means it runs at startup. It uh, sets 5651, uh, turns the line numbering on. That's what these line numbers. When you turn on bit 5651, it turns on this where it puts the line number in front of the um, line when you do a list. With 5651 turned off, it does not put line numbers in. Okay, so the first thing it does is uh, it goes down here and it does an, enables the can open. We have a can open connection on here. It uh, goes to a, a subroutine that enables the EPL network. It goes through and it checks the controller to make sure it's an EPL. It uh, checks to see if the EPL is operational. If it's not, then it does a EPLC startup. It runs a loop waiting for the bits to come back to say, yes, the EPL network is running. Once it sees that the network's running, uh, or not, it'll print out different messages. If it's not operational, it'll print a message to the screen that it failed to start, or it uh, it has successfully started. It'll give you a message that it's it's operational. And the once it's done um, and everything's enabled, it'll give you a message that says we're all good, and you can use that information then in to start your progs prog zero, or can leave it at a state where other programs can now run. So uh, once we know the line numbers that are in here, if I've made a typo, say um, up here, I didn't want to have a, uh, I didn't want to run prog zero at line 90, which after all my subroutines are done, they uh, would come down and run prog zero. Let's say if I want to uh, disable that temporarily, but I don't want to have to re-download my program to do that. Okay, we know that it's line 90, and the command is run prog zero. I can come down here and I can say 90 rem run prog zero. Now if I do a list, we take a look at line 90. Notice it's rammed out now. If I wanted to delete that line, I could just type in a 90 and hit enter, and it will delete the line. Let's say if I forgot a line, I can come in here. The reason they're spaced 10 apart is so I have room to insert more code. So let's say I need to insert one uh, after line 90. So let's take 95 we can add another command. I'm going to fix my line 90. I'm going to put it back to run prog zero. So I'm going to go 90 run prog zero and 95 is going to be print 
prog zero running. Let's see. That's yeah, we can do that. So uh, let's print prog zero running. So now if I do a list, we can say I have a new line. I didn't have to re-download. Now, the drawback to doing this is if I do very much editing in here, uh, it's going to be easier to upload my application uh, back to my, my PC rather than make all the changes on the PC. But unless I'm using uh, the right types of remark statements, the REMs, the remarks do not get uploaded and downloaded. If I'm using the ex or the single quote as my remark, my remarks do not get downloaded to the processor and they do not get uploaded. So any changes you make here, just remember you either have to make them in your program or you need to upload the program back again. Uploading a program back from the processor that's using single quotes uh, for its remarks though will wipe out all the remarks in your development system. So be cautious. Okay, uh, the terminal window, I'm going to clear this out again. Clear all. So the things we need to remember for the terminal window are anything that you want to do that affects a specific program or master, you need to make sure that beginning characters match up with the area you're trying to, to work with, be it a program, be it a PLC, or be it the sys. You have diagnostics tools you can run from here, commands that you use in your programs you can execute from this command line, set up tools, set up your buttons for things that you use in, uh, commonly for your debugging. So uh, without having to upload and download your programs, you can make modifications, see how it's running, do traces, see where your program may be having problems, use it to monitor values. If you wanted to uh, show you the values of certain parameters as it's running, you can use those print commands and have it print the value of the parameters. And when you use the L run, you'll be able to see those parameters changing as it goes through the code. So the terminator, terminal emulator is very um, valuable for doing those types of things and uh, shouldn't be discounted when you're doing your, your development. So I hope this has been of some use and might take some of the mystery out of why I can't turn my drives on from just anywhere and uh, that the terminal emulator is actually a useful tool for you going forward. Thank you for uh, participating. When using the terminal window, some key points to remember are that the commands you can use are dictated by your prompt level. Controller level information is at the sysprompt, program level are at the p00 level, etc. You can use the command diag to get information about the controller. Diag EPLD will return status and information about your EPL drives. For commands that you're repeatedly typing in, you can set up the buttons on the right-hand side of the screen to issue those commands with a single button press. When you're using the editor to modify programs, remember that uploading the program will erase your remarks in your development system if you've been using the single quote to do your remarks. This has been the Terminal Windows session for the EPL Demo Kit. Thank you for your participation.